In this ANSYS video, we will be looking at lab 4 question number 1. Before we get started, we first have to determine which type of units we're going to use throughout this question. Looking at this example, our best option would be to use the BIN column of the table of consistent units. Seeing as how everything is given in pounds, inches, and PSI, we don't have to do any conversion as those are the base units in the BIN column. Moving on, we can go ahead and determine which type of element we're going to use in this question. One thing that stands out to me by reading this example is that it specifies that they have circular cross-sectional areas with these diameters. Since link elements are typically squared in their cross-sectional area, we know that we can't use link elements for this example. Our next best option is to use beam elements. Since beam, you can specify what the cross-sectional area looks like. We'll be able to define it as being a circular cross-sectional area and we can input its diameter accordingly. In terms of material properties, we're given elastic modulus. We're not given Poisson's ratio, so we're going to set that to a value of zero. In terms of defining the cross-sectional area under the section, sections tab, we're going to create three different section IDs. We're going to call them 1, 2, and 6, and I chose these names just to correspond with the member numbers that they give you in the question. So ID number 1 is going to correspond to member number 1. It's going to have a radius of 0 0.5 inches. ID number 2 is going to have a radius of 0 0.75 inches, which corresponds to these members 2 to 5 right here. And Section ID number 6 is going to have a radius of 0 0.875 inches and it's going to correspond to members 7, 6, and 7 right here. Next, we can go ahead and create our model shape, which to do so, we're going to create key points located at these coordinates right here and we're going to connect them using lines. And that will give us the shape of the bike frame. In terms of meshing, all we have to do is make sure that we specify all the different section IDs with their corresponding members, which will be easy enough to do. Finally, we can apply our loads and constraints. Our constraints, I chose to put a zero degree of freedom constraint on the back wheel here and let the front wheel here move in the X axis but not in the Y. If you want to put a zero degree of freedom constraint on the back and front wheels, that is completely up to you. I just felt that this combination of constraints best suited this model. And once finally, we can go ahead and apply our loads, which are straightforward enough, applying a 30 pound load to the front node here and a 135 pound downwards force to the back node here. So we can go ahead and open up ANSYS. And we can get started by entering in our beam element type. So under preprocessor, element type. We're just going to add our beam and we're going to select two node right over here. Close that down. We can enter in our material properties now. So 30 PSI and Poisson's ratio is zero. Next, we can go ahead and enter in our cross-sectional areas. So under the sections tab here, we're going to select on beam and common sections. And this menu should come up. So we're since we're dealing with a circular cross-sectional area, we're going to want to select this subtype right here. And ID, we're going to make sure the ID number is 1. And we're going to enter in our radius which is just 0 0.5 in this case. Click apply and we're going to go ahead and create our ID number 2. So we're going to change ID number to 2. Once again we're going to have to select the subtype and enter in its radius. Apply and we're going to repeat this for ID number 6. Click OK. So now all of our sections have been defined and we can go ahead and model our object. So under modeling, 
create cue points in active coordinate system and we're going to create we're going to follow this chart right here that will give us our structure for the bike so I just entered in the last set of coordinates here and your screen should look something like this right now we can go ahead and create our lines now by opening up the lines tab here under create lines straight line and we're just going to click on all our nodes and make the bike structure like so so we go ahead and click OK and we can go ahead and mesh our model so open up the mesh tab mesh tools and on the element attributes we're this time we're going to select lines set now going back to our example here we know that member one is located right here so we're going to select on member one to start off click OK and we're going to give it a sections number right here of one right because if we drop this down these are all these were the three section numbers that we defined earlier so we're going to make sure that one is selected for this case click OK and we're going to repeat this process this time for members two three four five since they all have the same diameter so two three four five click OK and we're going to give these a sections ID of number two we're going to click OK and we're going to repeat this one last time for five and six and seven which are located right here and that diameter we said was located in sections ID six we're going to click OK so now all of our lines have the proper cross-sectional areas we can go ahead and open up the mesh tools tab once again and we're going to specify our size controls at this time we're going to go to lines set and we're going to select all of our lines in our model and we want since we're dealing with beam elements we're going to make them so that they have one division along each of them so enter in a one right here click OK and your screen should look something like this now we can go ahead and mesh our object now just click on mesh here and make sure all lines are selected click OK and your structure should turn this bluish color now we can go ahead and apply our constraints close down the preprocessor tab and open up solutions define loads apply structural displacement on nodes and this back wheel we want zero degrees of freedom and with a displacement value of zero we're going to repeat this process for the front wheel and we want this to have a constraint in the y-axis with the displacement of zero click OK now we can go ahead and apply our loads which is under the fourth moment tab here on nodes click on this front node here and we want the force to be applied in the y direction with a magnitude of negative 30 pounds click apply and we should get a red arrow facing downwards we can now click on the back node here and all we're going to change is the magnitude of the force which is negative 135 pounds okay and we should get the two red arrows here on the screen so our model is fully fully constrained with our loads applied so we can go ahead and solve our model current LS and now that our model is solved we can go ahead and extract the data so looking back at the question they gave us they want us to specify the reaction forces so to do that we're going to close down the solutions tab here open up general post proc and under list results we're going to open up reaction solutions and make sure all items is selected click OK 
and here we have our reaction forces on our nodes that we applied our constraints to. Closing that down, we can go ahead and specify the axle stresses. So if you guys recall from our first couple of videos, we found what the axial stress command was for ANSYS for a beam 188 element. So this time we're going to define it once again under element table, define table, add, and we're going to call this axial stress, axial direct stress. And we're going to select by sequence number. And in those first couple of videos, we found out that axial direct stress in ANSYS is the command M SMISC 31. So make sure you, that's entered in, in this box right here. Click OK. And we can close that down and list element table. Axial direct stress should now appear in this drop down menu. Click OK. And here we have all the axial direct stresses for our elements. And if you want to see which element number corresponds to which line here, we can simply go into plot controls, numbering, and select element numbers. Click OK. And here we have all the element numbers with which element number they're referring to in the model itself.